Types of Pronouns There are seven types of pronouns. Personal, possessive, reflexive, relative, demonstrative, indefinite, and interrogative. We're going to go over each of these one at a time. Personal Pronouns Personal pronouns take the place of nouns. When most people think of pronouns, they're thinking of personal pronouns. Here are the personal pronouns. I, me, us, we, you, he, him, she, her, it, them, they. And here's an example of a sentence using a personal pronoun. Colonel Mustard was invited to the party at Mrs. Witherspoon's mansion, but he didn't want to go alone. The personal pronoun he takes the place of Colonel Mustard's name in this sentence. It makes the sentence more efficient. Instead of repeating Colonel Mustard's name over and over again, the speaker substitutes the word he. Possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns take the place of possessive nouns. Here are the possessive pronouns. My, mine, our, ours, your, yours, his, her, hers, their, theirs, its. And here's an example of a sentence using a possessive pronoun. Mr. Whiskers was disappointed with his dinner. Possessive nouns show ownership by using apostrophes. Possessive pronouns do not use apostrophes, particularly the possessive pronoun its. If the possessive pronoun its used an apostrophe, it would be confused with the contraction its, which is it is. So it's very important we never use apostrophes with possessive pronouns to show ownership, only with possessive nouns. In this example sentence, we have the possessive pronoun his. The possessive pronoun his is replacing the possessive noun Mr. Whiskers, which would have an apostrophe. But since we are using the possessive pronoun his, we have no apostrophe to show ownership. The possessive pronouns can show ownership or possession just by themselves. Reflexive pronouns. Reflexive pronouns refer or reflect back to the subject of the sentence. Here are the reflexive pronouns. Myself, ourselves, yourself, yourselves, himself, herself, themselves, itself. And here's an example of a sentence using a reflexive pronoun. Andre just wanted to be by himself. It is essential that we use a reflexive pronoun here to complete the sentence, because if we used a personal pronoun, we'd be expressing a sentence with an entirely different meaning. For example, Andre just wanted to be by him. It doesn't mean the same thing. Or Andre just wanted to be by he. This also doesn't mean the same thing, but is now using incorrect pronoun case. So, reflexive pronouns are essential when we are referring back to the subject of the sentence or clause. We have to use reflexive pronouns carefully. Some people think that reflexive pronouns like myself are just an elevated or proper form of me or my, but they're not. They serve a specific grammatical function. Reflexive pronouns can only be used after the name or pronoun of the person to which they refer. Don't use reflexive pronouns like this. My children wanted to go to happy land with myself. The subject of the sentence here is children. Myself does not refer to children. It refers to the speaker. Therefore, myself is being used incorrectly. The speaker should be saying, my children wanted to go to happy land with me. And here's an example of a reflexive pronoun being used correctly. My children wanted to go to happy land with me, but I wanted to go by myself. Since the subject of the second clause is I, myself is being used here correctly. It is reflecting back to the subject I. I wanted to go by myself. And that is how reflexive pronouns are used. They're not just fancy forms of me or my. They're to be used specifically when they refer back to the subject of the sentence. Relative pronouns. Relative pronouns introduce relative clauses. Here are the relative pronouns. That, who, whom, whose, which, whoever, whomever, whichever. These pronouns can also function as other types of pronouns. They're only relative pronouns when they introduce relative clauses. And here's an example of a sentence that does that. The pirate captain, who had never seen the inside of a schoolroom, struggled to read the ransom note. Here, the relative pronoun who introduces the relative clause who had never seen the inside of a schoolroom. Again, who can function as other types of pronouns, but in this case, since it is introducing a relative clause, it is functioning as a relative pronoun. So let's talk more about relative clauses. Relative clauses begin with a relative pronoun and give readers and listeners more information about a noun. Here are some examples of relative clauses. Willard, who had just learned of the sun's power, used a magnifying glass to terrorize ants. Here, the relative pronoun who introduces the relative clause who had just learned of the sun's power, and this provides additional information about Willard. Here is another example of a relative clause. Ants that are exposed to magnified sunlight tend to combust. In this example, the relative pronoun that introduces the relative clause that are exposed to magnified sunlight. And this provides more information about the ants. Now look carefully at these two relative clauses. How are they different from one another?
I hope that you noticed that one is enclosed in commas while the other is not. So why do we use commas for one but not the other? The answer to this question is whether or not the relative clause is essential. That means, can you understand the sentence without the relative clause, or is it absolutely essential to understanding the meaning as the speaker intends it? Read the sentence without the relative clause and ask yourself, does it mean the same thing or roughly the same thing? If the sentence does mean the same thing without the relative clause, then the relative clause is non-essential and it should be enclosed in commas. However, if the sentence does not mean the same thing, if it means something different, then the relative clause is essential and we should not enclose it in commas. So let's read the first sentence without the relative clause. Willard used a magnifying glass to terrorize ants. Well, this sentence means roughly the same thing. We don't get the additional information about what Willard was learning, but the sentence means pretty much the same thing. Now let's read the second sentence without the relative clause. Ants tend to combust. Well, that's not true at all. Ants generally do not combust unless they're exposed to heat. So in this sentence, the relative clause that are exposed to magnified sunlight is essential. The sentence does not mean the same thing without it. Therefore, we do not enclose this relative clause in commas. Demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns take the place of things. Here are the demonstrative pronouns. This, that, these, those. And here's an example of a sentence using demonstrative pronouns. This is my favorite book about unicorns, said Patrick. Here the word this replaces the title of the book that Patrick is reading. And that is how demonstrative pronouns function, by taking the place of things in a sentence. Now the difference between this and that, these and those, is generally how far these objects are from one another. This usually refers to an object that is close at hand, whereas that refers to one that is more distant. These also refers to objects that are close at hand, but plural, more than one object that is close at hand, whereas those refers to a more distant or remote group of objects. Indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns take the place of unspecified nouns. Here are the indefinite pronouns. Another, all, any, anybody, anyone, anything, both, each, either, enough, everybody, everyone, everything, few, fewer, less, little, many, more, most, much, neither, none, nothing, one, other, others, several, some, somebody, someone, something, such. Yeah, there's a lot of them. The important thing here to remember is that indefinite pronouns are not definite. We do not know what they're definitely referring to. They are indefinite. They are taking the place of unspecified nouns. Here's an example of a sentence using an indefinite pronoun. Officer Ramirez heard something moving behind the dumpster. The indefinite pronoun something here takes the place of whatever is behind the dumpster. We don't know exactly what it is, but we know there is something back there, something that is not specified. Interrogative pronouns. Interrogative pronouns take the place of people or things and ask a question. Here are the interrogative pronouns. Who, whom, what, which, whose. And here's an example of a sentence using an interrogative pronoun. What's inside of that treasure chest? The speaker here is asking a question about an unspecified thing. The word what is taking the place of whatever is inside of that treasure chest. We don't know clearly what it is, and it's also being used to ask a question. When these pronouns are being used to ask questions, they're considered interrogative pronouns. Let's go over some examples of pronouns being used in sentences. The wolf covered himself in sheepskin and attempted to sneak into the shepherd's flock. Which word in the above sentence is a pronoun? And what type of pronoun is it? The pronoun in this sentence is himself, and it is being used as a reflexive pronoun. It is reflecting back to the subject of the sentence, the wolf. Here's another example of a sentence using a pronoun. Jean-Paul is going to paint something that will revolutionize the art world. Which word in the above sentence is a pronoun? And what type of pronoun is it? In this sentence, we have the pronoun something, and it is functioning as an indefinite pronoun. We don't know exactly what Jean-Claude is going to paint, but we know that he is going to paint a thing, an indefinite, unclear thing. And here's one more example of a pronoun. Frolicia wore a new dead animal skin so that Gola could notice her. Which word in this sentence is a pronoun, and as what type of pronoun is it functioning? The pronoun here is her, and it's functioning as a personal pronoun, taking the place of Trollisha's name. In review, 
Personal, possessive, and reflexive pronouns usually fill in for people's names, though they have different functions. Possessive pronouns showing ownership, and reflexive pronouns referring or reflecting back to the subject of the sentence. Relative pronouns introduce relative clauses. Relative clauses give us more information about nouns. Sometimes relative clauses are essential to understanding a sentence. When a relative clause is essential, we should not enclose it in commas. But when a relative clause is providing useful, enriching information, but not necessary to understanding the meaning of the sentence, then that relative clause is considered non-essential, and we should enclose it in commas to mark it as such. Lastly, indefinite pronouns fill in for unspecified or unknown people, places, or things.